Hello everybody. In this video, I want to talk a bit about the Animbot bookmarks and the camera sequencer in uh, Maya. Sometimes we need to deal with uh, several shots in a row, like we have uh, a sequence to animate where maybe in the studio we don't still have the layout and we need to figure out the cut, the length of the of the every single shot. Or like this one, I, I took a, a student work, this nice shot made by four uh, different shot is a sequence made from from these four shots and uh, in this case the students did the four different camera and here in the left we have the first beat the first shot and then it jumps to the second one this new camera which is here And then it jumps to the third, which is here. So as you can see, it's not super easy to do this way. Always try to go inside the right camera and see what happened. To be honest, in this case of student board, I would do just uh, with one camera and just animate here and switch to the next position without changing the camera because it, it's super easy it always follow you always can look through the one uh, the camera and have all the sequence but if you want to use this approach this is the moment where all this tool comes really uh, handy and helpful let's see how it works so first of all we rename the the, the camera and uh, what I do usually, I put the frame numbers in the camera itself. For instance, this one, it starts weirdly from zero to 79. Another thing, once we work in a sequence, also in, in a shot, we, we need to avoid it to start from zero, not even one. We always need to start like 100 to 1000 in order if we need to move uh, up and down the, the position of the shot we don't go below zero which is not good for Maya to calculate so always start from 1000 or 100 but of course in uh, in um, student work is not to deal and in the environment in the studio you will never uh, see starting from zero or one other thing to do and we will uh, talk about it later in this video never scale the camera this way to make it bigger to see i understand the students scaled up the camera but this can give some problem when we use the later the, the sequencer. If we want to scale, we need to do in another way. Let's uh, cut these, put back to one, the default one. You see this super tiny, but if we want to scale, we need to scale up this locator scale. This is the proper way to scale up and down the camera. It doesn't do any problem. So first of all, I, as I said, I like to rename, put in the, the frame range of my camera, like this way. So I renamed all my camera, camera one, two, three, and four. So four shots in this sequence. And always we need to do this to go here and see what happening inside and so on. So now we can use the bookmark of Animbot. So we just open this one, put maybe a name, shot cam as you want. Maybe I'll start with the default color 
And I can open once again here to set the frame range. I could also highlight this way and probably an inbot calculates the length of the shot. And then we can go here and do the other one. It's easy because now I, I rename it with the frame range, so I don't need to, to scrub and understand. I already know there, and I can easily do this shot cam zero two. Maybe I alternate the color, and I can put from eighty to one three one, and so on for the rest of the of the sequence. So we now have all the shots inside this bookmarks panel and you can easily move up and down if you want to uh, tweak something. And it's nice with uh, this tool that we can go up and down and uh, focus on the shot we want to, to animate. Maybe we are, we are in the first one and we just animate these. When we do with the second one, we just click here and it switch to the other frame range. But of course, we still need to change the camera. And if we need to do the play blast, we cannot do it this way because we always need to do this way blast. And then switch to the other, switch the camera, do display blast, and then switch to the other, and so on until the end. And uh, then we need to compose in an external uh, software. That's when the sequencer in Maya comes really handy and helpful. So let's see how it works. So in order to see the sequencer, let's go to window, animationator, camera sequencer. And here we have this blank window with, a, with nothing right now inside. To create a new sequencer, we just need to go create shot we can first maybe to help us see the frame range. We can switch here and we know that we have from zero to 79. So we go create shot, shot one maybe, camera one, zero 79. Current frame and apply. And we see here the The shot actually. We can scrub the sequencer, they scrub the timeline. And this way we can keep going by doing the rest of the shots. The shot two, camera two, AD. Two, one, three, one, current frame. Maybe you can do these first. And uh, apply. And it puts the other one. And so on for all the rest. Okay, now we have all these. shots here and when I scrub if I go here it takes the focus of the viewport for instance to show you what I mean I put this in perspective and this is the, the shot cam if I click here to highlight it and I scrub it switch between the camera 
So shot one, shot two, three, four. So it is clear how easy it is now to play basically and go back and forth between the shot and see what happened in the final movie. But I can do just now from here. If I do from the timeline, it doesn't work. I mean, it stays always in, the, in its own view. It doesn't switch between the camera. As you can see, this camera one always. But once I play with this, it does what is need to be done. And to do this, once we are happy, we can just create, they call the Ubercam. Create Ubercam. And uh, as I was saying before, there is a problem. Let's take a look at the script editor. There is a problem because the camera has been scaled. So we need to fix that. Let's see if we can do it all together. We cut this. We put one. Let's check one, 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 one. Let's try once again. Maybe we can select. I don't think it changes. Overcome. Okay. And now if we can see there is a overcome here. You can just put inside. So we look through it. And we can now just browse here. And our timeline, because like the sequencer, we don't need it anymore. So this way we can still use an bot to go to the, to the right shot and it switch automatically the right camera to the right point of view so it's super super handy and on top of that we can of course do the play blast from this window and we have the whole sequence rendered out and of course this is just a, a tip of what you can do with the with the sequencer like moving changing or whatever and uh, Putting how you stuff like that, but this is the basic. I guess I want to cover the basics, it's just to to have a, a tidy way to work. And um, of course, it's much more enjoyable to work this way, and easy to understand. Hope you like it.